How's it going guys? Jack and Maddie with the Toaster Res, and it is now 2022 and a lot of people always ask us, what CPU should I go with paired with my gaming computer? And we might be here to tell you that you don't need to go with an i9, an i7, an i5, maybe an i3 will get the job done. The i3-12100 and really the i3-10100 still are really good CPUs and a lot of people really sleep on them because they're i3s. What we're about to show you, is there really a reason for you to move from that i3 up to anything else from Intel? Well, we're about to find out, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Looking for an affordable gaming headset? Well, today's video sponsor Corsair has you covered with their new HS55 stereo headset featuring great gaming audio along with a built-in omnidirectional microphone that is discord certified and compatibility for pc mac and the latest consoles Oh, and it is one of the most comfortable headsets I have worn at this price point. It features all day comfort that I don't see a lot in budget headsets. Learn more about this headset by checking the link down below. And special thanks again to Corsair for sponsoring today's video. So for some quick disclaimers, you guys are probably wondering, well, what i5, what i3, what i7? You can see here we got 10th through 12th gen. So a big part of it is you go to like a 6th gen i3, that's a two core, four thread, but nowadays they're four core, eight thread. And pretty soon they're probably even going to have the efficiency cores and be even more cores and more threads. So we're really focusing on four cores and eight threads and up today. And we're going with the most recent, latest and greatest CPUs and APUs. Don't forget, this also applies to AMD Ryzen as well with something like their Ryzen 3100, 3300X. That's also a four core, eight thread and performance very similar to the 10100. So how are we gonna test this is we have this PC right here, which we actually gave away over on twitch.tv slash Bros. Follow because we do giveaways every single month over there. Sponsored by PC Bros, our PC selling business. Uh, but this right here features an RX 6600 and an i5-12400, which is a 12 gen i5 with six core cores and 12 threads. Now this build is very balanced, but does it necessarily need that i5? What we're gonna do is run some benchmarks on this PC as is, and then we're gonna throw on the i3 and see if we notice much of a difference and see if it's worth saving the like 50 to $60 sometimes that it could be versus the 12400 and the i3. We'll just not waste any more time and dive into some testing. And just for funsies, Matt and I are gonna predict what's going to happen here because this isn't exactly a test we've done before. I mean, we built a lot of computers here, well over a thousand last year for our PC song business, but it's a real question of, do we think it's going to actually have better performance or what do we think is going to happen? In my prediction, I think in games like Fortnite and Apex, which are on the benchmark rotation, it's going to be very little difference, if any at all. But when we stretch into higher end AAA titles that actually start taking advantage of more threads, you might start seeing a little bit of a difference. And for my prediction, I mostly agree with that. I honestly have always been kind of a budget person myself, so I always really root for the underdog. And I can honestly even think that a lot of AAA titles with the 6600 with the i3, I think we're going to see almost no difference because I think most AAA titles even can't even take advantage of more than four cores right now, but we'll just have to see. All right, guys, now that we have both CPUs tested, let's go over to those results. Now, what we ended up doing was testing the i5-12400 and i3-12100 in a handful of scenarios. We ran some built-in benchmarks like Forza Horizon 5 and Cyberpunk. And with Cyberpunk, we ran it twice, one with no applications running in the background within reason. Of course, there's gonna be some Windows stuff that goes in the background that we can't control, but we didn't have anything extra up. But on the second run, we had a couple of things open. We had Discord, we had a Twitch stream playing in the background. We had a general Google search and a couple other tabs open as you can see on screen here, just to add a little bit extra load to that CPU so we can see what kind of performance numbers would an average person get? Cause not many people out there are just gaming with nothing going on in the background. They got either Spotify up playing music, they're talking to their friends on Discord, or they have some stream up in the background and that does impact the FPS numbers. Now, first up, we're gonna go with Forza Horizon 5. Using the high preset and the built-in benchmark, we end up getting an average of 115 FPS with the i5-12400. In comparison to the i3-12100, we only got 113 FPS. This is a two FPS difference. As you can see right here, with an RX 6600, we are definitely GPU bottlenecked. So it goes to show you, if you're looking at an RX 6600 right now, the i3-12100 might make some sense in terms of saving some money because it can definitely handle the graphics card with not as much bottleneck as I thought originally it would in a game like Forza Horizon 5, which is a newer AAA title. Now, first up with the i5-12400 in Cyberpunk, high settings built-in benchmark, we're gonna be getting an average of 93 FPS with minimums of 43 and a max of 188. These are interesting numbers because the i3-12100 ended up getting an average of 69 FPS, a minimum of 50 and a max of 95. As you can see, those minimums are slightly higher, which means that i3-12100 with its out-of-box higher clock speed is actually able to keep those minimums a bit higher without much stutter, but it does really 
suffer in terms of multi-core performance. Cyberpunk in newer game taking advantage of more than four cores and eight threads, getting you about 20 plus FPS compared to the i3-12100. So that i5, if you're playing really high-end AAA titles and you want to get 60 plus FPS guaranteed, going with that 12400 six cores and 12 threads is probably a good idea. That last thing we decided to test was a couple of games, just getting a natural gameplay experience. You all can see what the frame rate looks like between the i5-12400 and i3-12100 in esports titles, and you might be surprised by the results. Sit down, be humble. What is in there? That's a good point, but I don't need a mat. He's like, I don't need Let's watch this. Oh, wow. There we go. And it's working. It's working all day long um, on its own with gaming, but oh my God, how does it do when we actually have multiple tasks going on and gaming? We're gonna go try to 1v1 this guy. Ooh, Mozambique. They both decide to snipe against you. Okay, that's a hit. That's another hit. They're crying. They're literally oh, just they're, not moving. This is getting really sweet. Is this guy gonna heal? Why is this guy still up here, dude? Why is this guy still focusing me? I'm gonna die. Oh, he charged this thing. They're just sitting there, taking bullets. What is this guy doing? Oh, okay, never mind. All right, we are now testing out Apex Legends on the i3-12100F. So we're now going down from six cores and 12 threads to four cores and eight threads. And obviously this will be a pretty similar test to see if like the i7 or i9 is worth it. But it looks like off the gate, we're at like, this will be, yeah, 130 FPS, give or takes. <laughs> that guy's pissed, he just healed. He's just fear punching. He dropped all of his armor. Yep. They do have some AFK action going on. Yep. How are they both? Wait, are they like just. I swear their wraith is going like this. Yeah. This definitely is not as high of octane um, gameplay as that first one. Whoa! Oh my gosh, the champion! I can't believe Easy. it! Easy! All right, gamers, we are now in Fortnite on Epic View Distance, everything else on low, and we're going to drop in the same spot, Tilted Towers, and we are using the i5-12400 right now. I almost forgot what CPU we were using, but yeah, we're gonna drop in real quick, and Fortnite is an esports title that I think will probably see a decent difference um, in terms of performance because, um, well, it's an esports game, and IPC is pretty important, and that i5 definitely is gonna perform a little bit better in that department compared to the i3, but again, the test will show first up with the i5, we're gonna drop in here okay so that frame rate is definitely a bit higher 100 plus 90 ish fps we'll see if that has any sort of impact with the i3 especially if this game is more demanding than it has been and we are in the build mode so like if you're playing non-building that could have a ver be a variable as well to consider but right now in terms of the building mode this is the frame we're getting and i don't hear anyone rushing me just yet but that most certainly could happen here soon there's somebody oh they're done oh someone else is shooting at me i'm gonna shut that door oh god I hear loud gunshots. We're hiding behind the couch. Oh, they didn't want it, dude. Frame rate is kind of all over the place. We hit 200 at some point. Um, I think we're, oh God, where's that guy? Okay, that was that was just kind of sad. I don't I don't know what was going on there. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Looks like 100 plus FPS. The real thing to see is if we're running around in this area, are we going to get dips lower into the 90s or is it going to stay about the same? And that could be a good test to see whether or not you need much more than the i3. Like see, sometimes right here we're into the 90s. If that continues or we get a little bit below 90s, then that's where we're probably going to have some issues. And you might want to consider the i5 over the i3. So there's that. Let's switch to the next game. Uh, we are going to drop in the Tilted once again and see if the frame rate is about the same with a little side-by-side -side action. All right, so we're slowly falling into Fortnite. Oh, God. Am I going to die, please? I don't have to redo this test. Okay, got this, got that. You all can see the FPS. I got to go sweat mode. There are a lot of gunshots going on around me. Everything seems to be about the same, so that that's definitely interesting to see. Oh, got him. And there's another guy around this corner. Nope, not a bot. Okay, there's that that was definitely a bot. Yeah, there's the frame rate. I3, 12100, Fortnite, same settings as before. Um, let's just go ahead since there, oh, there is somebody. Let me see if I can get a snipe on him. Okay, he just decided to run away. That's boring. 
All right, guys, so our predictions were pretty close to correct, although I was wrong about the really big AAA title like Cyberpunk. It definitely did take advantage of that six core 12 thread, surprisingly, but in games like Apex and Fortnite, we saw almost the exact same results. And even in some games that I3 is actually slightly better because it has a slightly stronger single core and dual core clock. Therefore, in certain games that don't take advantage of more than you know two cores, you actually do see better performance with the i3, interestingly enough. So what do we learn from this? Really, if all you play is eSports titles and you're looking to build a mid-range PC, you can save some money and go with an i3 and you'll have no problems whatsoever. But for you people out there who are very worried about future-proofing or want to play the latest and greatest and want to get the best FPS possible, maybe spending the extra 40, 50, 60 bucks is worth it for an i5 versus an i3, but the i3 definitely has a place in the market and can still support pretty much any mid-range to close to high-end GPU that's out there. So we definitely suggest you check the link down below if you're looking to build a PC with either the i3 or the i5. Both of those are really good CPUs. And if you have a bit of a higher budget, definitely set up to like the 12600K and above with those performance and efficiency cores because 12 gen Intel is really powerful when it comes to that. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. And if you don't want to have to worry about any of this core stuff, having to pick out what CPU, you want some experts to really get the parts that you need put together, you should check out our PC selling business. PCBros.tech is where we sell gaming PCs like this one. Well, we actually gave away this one, but we sell PCs like this one if you want it. And uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about all those cores and clock speeds and things like that. And if you use code TOZYBROS2 on checkout, you can save 2%. This is four, but two. I'm at two. 2%. See you guys later. Goodbye.